look at a day in my life. I have a really strict morning routine that I try and do every day to set myself up for the day. There are a few things that are part of it, including drinking 500 milliliters of water, taking my vitamins and supplements, doing 10 minutes of exercise, and this can be a walk or it can be 10 minutes of yoga. I'm not very strict on what it is and I just go with whatever feels right that day. And I also like to do some writing. I do stream of consciousness writing, journaling for about 10 minutes and see whatever comes out. And I found it's a really great way to center myself. And I do Wim Hof breathing as well. But first I'm gonna make a fresh juice. This is how I've been starting my day this month and it's really helping me to get those nutrients, get energy up as soon as I wake up. daily walk I think I'm gonna do about 12 minutes so yeah getting there and I'm gonna take you with me so you'll get to see a little glimpse of Casa Blanca <laughs> really take it out of me even though it's not too far I usually have to take about 20 to 30 minutes to regroup but after that I'm going to do a couple of hours of work and I'm mainly doing a research this afternoon reading around how to create an effective sales channel everything we're doing at the moment is around building traction and getting more people to use our product and learning how they're using our product so we can iterate and make it a better experience for our teams so that's what i'll be doing for another two to three hours and then i will take another break it's the end of the day and I've somehow, I now have been wiped out. This is what usually happens to me. My symptoms get a lot worse in the evenings. And it's like this cumulative fatigue. At the beginning of the day, I honestly wake up as if I can do anything. And this is what happens. I do so much more in the mornings. And then it gets to about 3 p.m. and I'm completely wiped out. But overall, it's been, it's been a good day. I went for lunch, which was really nice. Then, I did a few more hours of work when I got back. What I try and do in order to not not get too tired while I'm working is to go between different energy sources. So I got told by my doctors that there are lots of different types of energy that contribute to the condition. And you have emotional energy, you have psychological energy, you have cognitive energy and physical energy, obviously. And the difficult thing is, is that physical energy can be quite easily measured. So I keep track of how many steps I'm doing. I keep track of my heart rate and all of this. But if I'm working too hard or I have too much stress, either emotional stress from my personal life or stress from my work life, this is very difficult to measure and it kind of seems to compound. Sometimes things like chores can really tire me out but those are needed so I might do chores in the morning first thing then I switch to work so then I was doing physical energy I then switch to working which is more cognitive energy and then I might switch again to physical energy and then I might speak to a friend so then I'm using more social energy and I kind of try and switch between them and when I learned that I completely changed my perception of um, how to lay out my day that's been really helping me to work obviously 
I'm not working at the level that I used to, but this is something that I'm learning to accept. I think I had quite a toxic relationship with productivity. I wanted to squeeze every single moment I had into something productive, and I really wasn't taking time to rest and to relax and recover. I was doing everything to the extreme, and obviously these health issues have been a huge reset in terms of my perception of how to spend my time effectively. You can't be productive every day when you don't know how your body is going to be when you wake up. I've also been reading Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now, and I'm really, really enjoying that. I think some of the, one of the hardest parts of this year has been learning to accept my condition, accept that I don't know when I'll get better and having to live with that. Instead of setting myself these goals, these arbitrary goals, like three in three months I'm gonna be better. Now I just have to accept that I don't know, I just don't know. And this book has been really great at getting me to accept that. So far, there are two key takeaways. The first one is that in order to really have mastery over your mind and body, you need to be able to observe your thoughts as an external observer. So if, you're, if I'm having an anxious thought about my condition, I should be able to view that thought and view it as something that is independent to me. I'm not there yet, but paraphrasing, this book is all about that. So if you want to pick it up, do that. I'm not a card by any means. And I've been listening to it on Audible. I think it's better to listen to than to read. And then the other key takeaway is, what was it? His theory is that when we're unhappy in a situation, it means that we're not actually present in the here and now and that we're either thinking about the past or the future and that if we're truly present in the present moment we are content all of our anxieties and stresses and negative emotions come from being obsessed about the past or the future i know it's that he makes it sound so simple and when i'm listening to it i'm like yeah yeah of course but in practice i'm I can't do that yet. I think a lot about the future, less about the past. So that has been my day. And I think for the rest of the evening, I'm going to read a little bit. I'm probably gonna watch some TV and just completely zone out. And it's been fun trying out this new format. If you're not subscribed to this channel, then please do. I'll be doing a lot more casual content and, and travel content as well, sharing where I am because I've been, I've been moving around a lot. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.